Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Srinivas Prasad. I'm a senior consultant interventional cardiologist and a heart valve expert at Fortis Hospital, Banagata Road. Today, I'm going to talk about a case who is a 64-year-old uh, lady who got admitted in our hospital with a uh, very severe heart failure and a multi-organ dysfunction. The cause for which was there was a re-narrowing of her previous surgical aortic valve. In 2013, uh, 10 years back, she had underwent an aortic valve replacement for her congenital aortic valve abnormality. At that time, the surgeons had a tough time because she had an abnormal anatomy and uh, the salvage itself was miraculous. Ten years down the lane, now she has come back with a degeneration of the tissue valve. Now it is much more complex because it's not only a native vessels, there's also a surgical valve which has got failed where the tissue is necrosed and the tissue valve itself is an abnormally tilted angle. So because of which, because of this condition, she was refused surgery as well as transcatheter aortic valve replacement at her previous center, previous surgical center. Also, she went on with a multiple opinions with different hospitals across the city, across the country, where she was told the same. Because of her complex anatomy, this case is non-doable. Any attempt to do with a transcatheter aortic valve can also compress her coronary arteries and can lead to heart attack and have a death on the table. So with that, with everybody refusing, she was just roaming around the hospitals. To her hospital in June 2023, she got admitted with a severe heart failure with a multi-organ dysfunction. She was in a very bad state. Day by day, her heart failure was progressing. None of the medications were helping her out. So only way was we need to replace the valve and if at all, if there is going to be a compression of this coronary arteries, we need to tackle that as well. We also took multiple opinions from expert valve experts across the world. Everybody said this is kind of a red signal case, red flag case, which should not be done at all. And patient should be left to the destiny. So, but with the relatives looking at us with a lot of hope, we thought we'll take up this challenge. We had a couple of challenges. One, negotiating and replacing that valve surgically is impossible because of a lot of calcium deposits and abnormal anatomy. Transcatheter negotiating is also difficult. Deployment can be challenging. And uh, if at all, if we are deploying during the procedure, the coronary arteries can get compressed and she might have a heart attack. So we had a discussion along with a surgical team we decided for hybrid TAVI. What is hybrid TAVI? So here what we do is to protect the coronaries, which might get compressed during the TAVI, we might put a graft that is minimally invasive CABG. So we plan for a mid cap for, that com for the coronary artery. And immediately after that mid cap, we can take her up for a TAVI and try out the TAVI. If TAVI fails, then patient may not improve. So this is where we were. So we went through the CT, analyzed it in detail and found that there are a lot of practical problems, but uh, we planned out our contingency plans, what are the ways we need to tackle and so on. On the D-Day, on the day of uh, surgery, while inducing anesthesia for a minimally invasive bypass surgery, just before that she crashed. So we didn't have a time. So patient was wheeled into cath lab for a bailout tower. Having understood her complex anatomy extensively, going through multiple times in our CT, we decided to take up that challenge and go ahead with the TAVI. In case if she develops a compression of uh, coronary arteries, we'll put her on an ECMO, which is available at our hospital now, and then take her back to the CABG later on after the TAVI. We thought we'll just reverse the process. There was also a remote chance that if we do everything well, very skillfully as planned, we might get away without compressing the coronary arteries. But the challenge of traversing the catheter and the valve is still there. So having understood everything, having thought of multiple contingency plan, we went ahead with the bailout tower and we did that successfully without compromising the coronaries. Her condition started improving instantaneously on the table, a BP stabilized, her inotrope requirements came down. Over the next four days, uh, she started recovering from multi-organ dysfunction and on 10th day, she was discharged home in a perfectly normal condition. So she came back for the follow-up after almost six weeks and by this time, she's back to her routine. She's 
ever grateful to us and our hospital for doing this because she has been refused this kind of a treatment everywhere else so with this we open up a new uh, dimension in an uh, interventional cardiology where even a complex tilted valves and complex anatomy valves can be replaced with the transcatheter therapies and our skill sets and our kind of an analysis can be adapted by everyone across the country and can be done easily this case was an almost impossible save an untrodden path she had an old valve replacement in aortic place aortic valve replacement it was a tissue valve done long ago the tissue had degenerated she required a re replacement because the tissues had all got stuck together and were closing heart was not able to pump and because it was not able to pump it had got tired failed and she was brought from outstation in a heart failure state in a very moribund state we had a problem when we investigated her that we needed to put a transcatheter valve as a new valve there to relieve that choking on the heart but also on the heart arteries the most important heart artery the left front artery had an origin which was coming on a very awkward point ideally we could put a catheter keep it there and then do the new valve uh, implantation that was not possible so we had planned to do a bypass just limited minimal bypass there keyhole bypass and then do this procedure as a safety but she crashed we had no time to do that bypass anything so we thought that we will just take a chance as a desperate chance but when we did this it went on smooth and very easily new valve could be put in we got the proper angles and we realized that this is something that we had learned which others can draw a leaf from our experience and even such desperately unsavable cases with courage and cutting edge technology can sail through so the importance of this case is a near impossible save but an untrodden path and i think a lot of these complicated cases can actually be tried and done if something had gone wrong we still had the option of doing a bypass on it after the valve was open so uh, with this we encourage all our patients that uh, if there is any complexity need not worry about it you can consult us with that we are sure we can help you out with all kinds of support whatever whatever we can offer thank you <laughs>